A couple weeks ago, I mentioned I had picked up some new, to me, soft scents. Like many of you, I indulged in quite a few plug-in sales. In particular, I got a couple of soft scents. Among them was Arturia's Pigments 4. And the other was Phase Plant. It may seem a little bit redundant to get both of these powerhouse VSTs at the same time, and while it's true you can make a lot of the same kinds of patches on both scents, the way that you go about making those patches is actually quite different. While Pigments is super deep and super flexible, it still really feels like one synthesizer that has a predetermined architecture and kind of leads you to a destination. Kind of like that. Phase Plant, on the other hand, has no desire to hold your hand, 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 hand. I need better writers. And instead throws a bunch of blocks into your playpen and says, you figure it out. A bit more like that. Now I'm gonna kick it over to a younger, more innocent me from last night to demonstrate. I think the easiest way to demonstrate what I'm talking about would be to demonstrate what I'm talking about. And I think the easiest way to do that would be to make a granular patch within phase plant. And yes, it is possible to make granular within phase plant. I'm not the first to demonstrate this. I'm pretty sure I've seen other tutorials on YouTube addressing this very same thing in depth. But just to show you kind of how phase plant allows us to build everything from the ground up using all of the components and the knowledge that we have to have of those components to make up a granular engine, we can get to the point where we have a granular synth. So I'm going to pull up an empty instance of phase plant. Here we have our generators, our three effects lanes, and our modulators at the bottom. I'm gonna click here and bring up a sampler. As you may know, granular is just taking a sample and chopping it up into little teeny teeny little bits and then randomizing them in various ways. So I am going to load marimba C3. Beautiful. I'm gonna set that to loop. We have our looping region here. I'm gonna drag the length of this loop to be closer together. And as you can see with me just dragging it manually, I can get some granular results. And the good news is in phase plant, we can modulate pretty much every one of these parameters. So I am going to add an LFO. I'm gonna slow it down and I am going to send that to the start position. You can see it represented here in the GUI. I'm going to add another LFO. Let's go into some of our shapes here and do something a little bit more weird. And I'm going to send this to, let's say the length and give it a negative value. It's not very interesting because there's not a lot of variation happening. I can adjust the crossfade, which is going to make the edges a little bit less pronounced. And I'd like to modulate that just a bit so that we get some of those clicks, but they're intermittent. I'm actually also gonna make this LFO bipolar, which I can do here. I can limit the range of this LFO by adjusting it here. I can add two LFOs to the same destination. And now I can go to ping pong. Now when it hits the edge, it's going to come back in reverse. So now we have some forward and backwards granules. You may remember in other things like pigments, we have the ability to do pitch shifting. We can do that here in phase plant as well, but we have to know how to set it up. I can actually use a quantizer in the form of a remap. Let's do something really crazy. Let's go to a scale. How about a major scale? I'm actually just gonna give this another LFO, send this to only positive values and then attach this to this so that it, you can see that it's corresponding here. I'm gonna slow this LFO down and then I'm going to send this remap or the quantize, which is what it's doing here, to the semitones. Uh, if I right click on that, I can put in, let's say, within 12 semitones. Done. 
Let's do something a little bit more typical that we might do with a granular patch. And that might be to do like an octave shift. So I can go to 50% chance. I actually think that I want to give this, um, this random value over here. Now I'm gonna send that to here and say 24. So it'll shift up two octaves. I've changed my mind actually. I'm gonna give this a random and speed that up and make it voice mode independent so that each time I play a note, it's going to fire off another one of these random generators. And I'm going to sign that here. I've also made my chance bipolar, so it's really going plus or minus an octave above and below. I could make that more extreme if I made this 24. It would be two octaves either way now. And also make the speed a bit more random. I'm gonna send this back to just positive values. I can add a filter if I press Alt and select filter here. Give that some release time. I have pulled up here an instance of pigments just for demonstrative purposes. If we go in here, and we go to the sample engine, uh, all we have to do to set all of that up <laughs> is uh, load in our sample engine and hit one button. Now it's a granular synth, right? And I can of course modulate all of this stuff and it has the courtesy of applying all of these randomizers here at the bottom where we can randomize the pitch for subtle variations, we can randomize the density, we can randomize the start position can randomize the size, can give it some panned width, and also some volume randomization. So that each grain is a slightly different volume. It's not the most interesting sample, but you get the idea. I'm gonna close that and head back over to Phase Plant, and we can implement some of those same kind of things. Since I already have this random generator set up, how about I apply this to the level? Apply that to the filter cutoff. And apply that to the pan. And that's pretty cool on its own, but I believe I can duplicate it by holding control and dragging it down here. Now I have two instances. I can change the sample. I'm gonna go to Xylo 1. I have to engage loop again so that it has all of those connections set up. Let me drag this over a bit. Let's see what that sounds like now. There's not much variation. It's just like having two layers of two different samples on top of each other because it's taking everything from the same modulators. But what I could do is go and give myself another randomizer over here. I'm actually gonna name this group two so that I don't confuse myself. And I can assign this to the length to make it different than our other sample. give this its own remap and go in and say 50% and make that control the semitones here. And let's make it 12. Change the envelope amount so that this comes in slightly afterward. We've added no effects to this point. And go in and add a dual delay, because why not? How 
about some distortion. <laughs> the distortion down a bit. And that's with no reverb. So we've got to add some reverb. And I think I know just the thing. I'm going to go to Convolver and pull up one of these Venus Theory impulse responses. I really like the water drip. I'm going to reverse that and move the start a little closer. There are all these weird artifacts in this convolution reverb. If you watched my organ video where I ran a pipe organ through this convolution reverb, you know. So as you can see, we can do a lot of things in here that maybe we don't initially see that we can. We just kind of have to know how to build things up from the components, from the ground up. It's like they threw a bunch of building blocks at us and we're like, here, you figure it out. And uh, that's what we have to do. I need better riders. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas for use cases for both synths, or if you're trying to decide between the two, which one you might prefer first, one is not really better than the other, they're just very different types of workflow. If you'd like to learn more about the basics of subtractive synthesis, I do have a free workshop that's about 20 minutes long outside of the YouTube algorithm. That'll be the first link in the description where we can really go deep and there aren't any trolls and uh, no one cares that I'm explaining things and not doing some sort of weird edit every five seconds. If you like the video, you can like the video by clicking the button that looks like this. And if you would like to see my rapidly graying beard more frequently, you can click subscribe. And I'll continue to make more videos about synthesizers. Oh, by the way, here's that video that I talked about in the beginning of this video, if you want to watch more about pigments.